talk about what happened over the weekend and just this slip that we've seen to have in this country away from our own sovereignty and independence. Candace Owens was fired from the Daily Wire. She was fired very specifically because she took a stance that was anti-Israel. Some could, some could say she was anti-Israel. Some could say she's pro-Palestine. However you want to frame it, she took a stance that was very different than Ben Shapiro's. And in the end, it cost her her job. Now, many people will say, well, but the Daily Wire is an independent organization. You know, it's a private company. They could do whatever they want. But the Daily Wire is a company that has been spouting off the fact that it's or been trying to tout itself as free speech and anti-cancel culture. That's how they built their entire brand. That's how they became as big as they did by being the free speech anti-cancel culture organization. And yet... It seems you can have all the free speech you want over at the Daily Wire, that they'll protect you, that they'll employ you, they'll offer you movie deals. If you get fired from Disney, for example, they'll offer you all of these various different, these different uh, jobs and opportunities unless you take a stance against Israel, unless you're critical of Israel. Candace Owens was their, you know, favored black commentator, right? They thought, oh, here's our, she's speaking up against this wokeism, against the constant Uh, calls of racism, this, racism, that. And Candace Owens was saying, no, that is not what's going on here. They revered her. They embraced her. They propped her up. They platformed her. And then they ultimately canceled her when she said, let me give you a dose of more free speech. They didn't like that free speech. You're not allowed to have that free speech at the Daily Wire. Now, that wouldn't be a big deal. I mean, it is a big deal no matter what, really, because America should embrace a culture of free speech. We should be against any and all forms of cancel culture. Because we should say we are a country that embraces freedom of thought, diversity of thought, and that if somebody is disagreed with, people will just tell them we don't agree with you. And they'll come at them in a mob form with we don't agree with you. You're so stupid. And that's ultimately that's free speech. That's how America should be. So we should be fundamentally against this sort of cancel culture because it's antithetical to human to (laughs) to human values, but also to American values. But um, it's particularly heinous when it comes from a company that says, oh, but we are the free speech warriors. We're the free speech warriors. This, was, this would be like if Bud Light came out saying, we're anti-woke. We are the anti-woke beer. Now, it was already bad enough because most of the people who drank Bud Light were the anti-woke variety, right? And they learned that lesson when they then had Dylan Mulvaney sponsor a bunch of, you know, have the Bud Light ads and have Dylan Mulvaney on a Bud Light can. That didn't go over well with their anti-woke audience. That was a a company making a decision for the company and ultimately it backfired. But even with that situation, Bud Light never came out saying we're the anti-woke beer. They never made those claims. They just learned a lesson the hard way. But Daily Wire made claims. The claims they made were we are for free speech. We are anti-cancel culture. And then they ultimately fired Candace Owens. Rather than the alternative, which would have been just to allow her to continue the debate, continue the discussions with the various different rabbis that she was having, maybe even debating Ben Shapiro would have been a way to go about it, allowing the free speech, allowing the thought, but just allowing more debate. And if the viewers of Daily Wire determined she was wrong, then they would determine she was wrong. And if that cost her viewers, then that would cost her viewers. And if that was the reason why you wanted to let her go because her viewership was down and nobody was watching her anymore and you're putting a bunch of money into it, then maybe that's a business decision. But this wasn't a business decision. This was a cancel culture decision. They just didn't like the fact she was critical of Israel. Now, besides Candace Owens, we've seen this, this exact sort of, you cannot criticize Israel lest you want to risk your job. We've seen this happen over and over and over. It's become more glaringly obvious since October 7th, since this latest war on Gaza. But it's been here for quite some time. What we've seen during this, uh, during this latest iteration, this since October 7th, what we've seen is a real full court press towards censorship. We've seen the presidents of Harvard and UPenn fired after they were questioned by Representative Lee Stefanik, who kept asking them, are calls for genocide against your code of conduct? And the university presidents kept saying, not unless it actually goes to behavior. When it crosses the line into harassment or bullying, then yes. Otherwise, no, speech is not against our code of conduct. 
Now, remember, Elise Stefanik, as much as it's shocking the way that question was phrased, are calls for genocide against your code of conduct. Many of us are event, very much against calls for genocide. But she didn't really mean it the way that she phrased it. What she meant were are calls for free Palestine against your codes of conduct. Because really, in her mind, genocide, a call for genocide is happening anytime someone says free Palestine. And that really was her question. These presidents lost their job. The very first black female president of Harvard lost her job over saying she was defending free speech. Now, are these presidents hypocritical? Do they defend free speech all the time? Probably not. Probably they are hypocritical. There's probably a lot of woke issues where they say you're not allowed to say that. That's that's harmful to our students' well-being and their feelings, and you can't say these things. We need safe spaces. But ultimately, in this particular instance, they were defending free speech, and they got fired for it. So you have Candace Owens fired for free speech. You have the presidents of these Ivy League universities fired for their free speech. We have TikTok being fired for free speech. Congress is the most ineffective branch of government. They can't get anything done. They can't protect the border. They can't pass budgets. All these guys can do, all these clowns can do in Congress is do showy interviews. Uh, They parade around just like the State of the Union address, parade around trying to to make statements, trying to get themselves on magazine covers, become famous, fundraise a lot of money from their donors. They're really ineffective. They're useless. But when it came to banning TikTok, they weren't so useless, were they? They were really quick. This was the most effective I've ever seen them. They banned TikTok with lightning speed. And why was it? Was it because China's really, truly an actual threat to us in this very moment? Sure, you may have some qualms about TikTok. You may have qualms that it's owned by a Chinese company. You may have uh, the Trump certainly voiced those concerns. Those are potentially legitimate concerns, debates we could have. But there's no imminent threat right now. There's nothing being done, no evidence of any sort of meddling or any sort of information being had by the Chinese government. None of that. There was no evidence of this. But TikTok was banned with lightning speed. Why? Not because of China. It had nothing to do with China. If you gobble that up, you're just gobbling up the narrative they're spewing at you. The real reason why TikTok was banned was because, or the the legislation was passed to ban TikTok, if I'm going to be accurate, right? It hasn't been banned yet. But the reason why they voted to essentially ban TikTok, knowing that it cannot be separated from its parent company, that it's impossible to just carve out the United States TikTok and give it to and sell it off to an American company. It's impossible to do. So it would be effectively a ban of TikTok. The reason why they did this was because the Israel lobby said, young people are pro-Palestine. We have to do something about this. And on TikTok, the young people were overwhelmingly pro-Palestine, 10 to 1, if not more so, 100 to 1 were pro-Palestine, probably even greater than that, to be honest. And so they effectively looked to quickly shut it down. We cannot have that kind of speech in this country, this pro-Palestine speech. You're not allowed to say free Palestine on a college university. You're not allowed to say Israel's committing a genocide on the Daily Wire. You're not allowed to say we support Palestine and there's a genocide going on on TikTok. You're not allowed to do these things. And they've now, they... Who are they? The big money interests. The big money interests have infiltrated and bought off our political leaders. They've bought off our news media organizations. And they are essentially uh, meddling in our national sovereignty, quite frankly, certainly in our national independence. We don't have independence. We don't have sovereignty when we're being controlled by actors of a foreign country. Lobbyists of a foreign country. They should be registered agents of that foreign country, but they're not. They get a pass. Why? Beats me. I don't know. Good question. Question we should all be asking. And back in 2019, a lot of people talked about BDS. If you know what that is, that's Boycott, Divest, and Sanction. That is the Boycott, Divest, and Sanction movement of Israel to end its apartheid or genocide or occupation or blockade whichever word you want to use, they're basically ripping away of equality to the Palestinians, keeping them as a subjugated class with no real rights. It's to end that, whatever you want to call it. 
And back in 2019, there was a light shined on on BDS because Congress was voting on whether or not they were going to affirm or, you know, or make some sort of laws that were sort of anti-BDS, which is really speech. If you decide to boycott or call for boycotts, divestments, or sanction of Israel, that is free speech. That is your free speech. And this was, this free speech, this desire to boycott protest was being voted on by Congress saying that we say this is anti-Semitic. You're not allowed to do this. Well, at that time, a light was shined on it. And at that time, 27 states had passed legislation, actual laws in the books, that if you are in these states and you have a government contract, meaning if you are a teacher or if you work for the city or if you work uh, or if you're a contractor and you happen to be getting some money from the government because you're maybe, you know, you're the independent contractor or your, your company is contracted to repave roads or build buildings or whatever it might be, you are not allowed in your personal life to call for boycotting of Israel, to be pro-BDS, you are not allowed to do that personally and receive government money in 27 states. That was in 2019. Well, look at this. Here we are in 2024, and that number has expanded to 37 states. So 10 more states since 2019 have adopted these anti-BDS laws. And this is before October 7th. This was as of November of 2023. So many of these laws were passed in 2021. And uh, like my home state of Idaho, passed these anti-BDS laws in 2021. You're not allowed to boycott, divest, or sanction Israel or call for that. You're not allowed to do that and receive any sort of government money. Now, how can they do this? And why in the world are we protecting Israel? What other country can you say we have laws like this to protect? Do we have laws like this for China? Could you imagine if we did? Do we have laws like this for Russia? Could you imagine if we did? Could you imagine if we had laws like this for any other country in the world? But I mean, just imagine England, England, which is our closest ally. Could you imagine if the United States of America, a country that once battled England for its independence, actually had a law that you weren't allowed to boycott English goods? Could you imagine that? But here we are. You're not allowed to boycott Israel uh, in in 37 states in this country. The constitutionality of these laws have not been challenged in court. Nobody really knows if they're truly constitutional. I can't imagine that they are. Why do they pass these laws? How do they get away with it? Well, they say that being anti-Israel is anti-Semitic. They say that this is a form of discrimination on the same level as discrimination based on gender, race, or similar attributes. You're not allowed to to discriminate against Israel. You can discriminate against Russia in this country. Our country has blatantly done so. You can discriminate against China in this country. Our country has also blatantly done so. You can say, we're going to stop Chinese trade. We're going to boycott this. We're going we're to d- divest from that, from this country or that country. And for some reason, it's not in the same it's not considered the same discrimination based on gender, race, or similar attributes. If you say, I'm going to boycott China, China, a country full of Chinese people, wouldn't that be you are discriminative against Chinese people? Same thing for Russians. Wouldn't you be considered discriminative against Russians if you're boycotting Russia? No, of course not. You're boycotting a country, a foreign country, a country that, has not, that is not the United States, and we should— and, yeah, you, you should, as, as an American, you have the right to not like certain countries. You have the right to love other countries. And you should have the right to boycott whichever country or whichever issue you want to boycott. But when it comes to Israel, they say, but Israel's unique. It's different. Why is that? Because it's a country of Jews. And, but, but then, you know, they're very quick to point out the fact that there's two million Arabs who are not Jewish living in Israel, right? They're all, whenever convenient, very quick to point that fact out. But Nonetheless, you are criticizing Jews if you criticize Israel, not Israelis, which would make the most sense. You're actually criticizing Israelis. You're actually criticizing Israel, which is full of Israelis. And some of those Israelis are not even Jewish. But you're but they've conflated it. They've conflated and they say, don't be don't any criticism of Israel is anti-Semitic. And then they wonder why anti-Semitism is on the rise because they've conflated the very two. They've said Israel is Jewish. Jews are Israel. Israel is Jews. 
any sort of criticism of one is a, is a criticism of the other. Even though 51% of the world's Jews live in the United States of America and are American, only 30% of the world's Jews live in Israel. But criticizing Israel is for somehow, some way, criticizing an entire group of people. Nobody thinks if you boycott China and you say things against China that you're criticizing Chinese people. I've never felt throughout my entire life that discussing the Vietnam War, talking about losing the Vietnam War, we should have won or we shouldn't have been there, whatever it might have been, any sort of discussion about the Vietnam War, I never took to be, oh, you're against me because I'm a Vietnamese American. But this, this Israel-Jewish conflation has caused, uh, ha has been so strong. It, it's a very crafty tool to keep us in line with supporting Israel at all costs because nobody wants to be called an anti-Semite. Nobody wants to be called a racist. And if that's what you're going to be labeled, unless you pledge your allegiance and your support to this other country, this foreign Middle Eastern country, you know, you're going to be labeled an anti-Semite. Nobody wants that. So it's a very crafty and clever conflation that has allowed, that is really, uh, really has uh, supported this blindless, endless support for Israel. And now we've seen even, uh, you know, really hit a pinnacle over the last couple of days. It's bad enough to have university presidents fired because of protecting free speech. Candace Owens fired from the Daily Wire. It's really bad to have 37 states in this country passing anti-BDS laws, saying you're not allowed to boycott, divest, or sanction Israel or call for that. Otherwise, you're going to lose your government job. It's bad enough that they've gone after social media, not because they're really truly afraid of China's control of social media, because they're afraid of young people talking about Palestine, and they need to control the narrative. That's why they want to shut down TikTok. But it really hit a pinnacle these last couple of days. We are on, we're, we're approaching Easter Sunday for Christians. That's a big holiday. For many of us who are culturally Christian, but not practicing Christians, it's still a big holiday, just like Christmas. And yet now they've said to people on social media, there's a new trend going around where they're trying to, they're trying to, uh, tell people that saying Christ is king is anti-Semitic. The phrase Christ is king, which Christians have been saying since Christians were Christian, that that phrase is now anti-Semitic. And you shouldn't even use that phrase because if you use that phrase, you're being an anti-Semite when you say that specifically to a Jew. Now, you could say that to apparently like a Buddhist. You could say it to a Hindu. You could say it to... Um, a variety, a Muslim, and apparently it's not anti-Buddhist, it's not anti-Hindu, it's not anti-Islam, -Is but it's somehow anti-Semitic to say Christ is king, even though Jesus was a Jew, supposedly. Um, that There's a whole discussion on that that we could have, we're not going to get into today, but uh, yes, he was from Judah, he was from Judah, so he was a Jude, he was a, a for sure. Um, so nonetheless, like, uh, Jesus, uh, saying Jesus Christ is king is now somehow anti-Semitic. That one, uh, somebody has really overplayed their hand on that one. I'll tell you what, it's one thing, all this other stuff is bad enough, and it really should be glaringly obvious to people that the United States has lost its independence, its ability to be independent. It's, a, it's even its sovereignty, you could, you could argue. The sovereignty of the United States has lost to the Israel lobby, but now it's really overplaying your hand to then start to go after Christians and their beliefs, their faith. Christians who have been very much on the side of Jews and Israel for a variety of, you know, for really for the reason of the Jew, of the belief, of the Zionist belief that Jews need to return to Israel, that there needs to be a literal gathering of Israel in order, in order for Jesus Christ to come back for the second coming, for the Battle of Armageddon, all this, right? There is that. Um, and so to go after Christians now and to say, stop saying Christ is king, that's anti-Semitic, really overplaying their hand on that one. And I think that one is, is going to be the actual straw that breaks the camel's back. That is going to be the one thing that causes the right wing Christian class to suddenly say, wait a minute, who are we supporting? What are we supporting here? They're fundamentally this particular group that is very, being very vocal about the about claiming Christ as king is anti-Semitic. Many of the guys over at the Daily Wire are the ones saying this, that, uh, that there is a anti-Christian push, that there is a, you know, you must be pro-Israel or else, and even pro-Jew or else. Even You can't even, 
apparently proselytize and practice your own religion, which is what Christians believe in. Christians do believe in conversion and proselytizing, and Christians actually believe that in the end, everybody must bend a knee to Jesus Christ or they can't be saved. That is the Christian. That's what Christian Christianity is. It's a belief that everybody will accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior in order to be saved. That's the belief. So we've got a problem. It's really becoming glaringly obvious that if we've got laws that have been enacted in this country, we've got journalist or supposedly free speech journalism organizations, universities, social media companies, and now even religion under attack, saying that you can't have all of these things if you're going to use these things to come at Israel or even in some cases, you know, when they say Christ is king, that's not even about Israel, that's about Judaism. You're not allowed to say anything about anything, about anything ever, anywhere that is in relation. All you have to do is just open up your checkbook and write checks and keep supporting Israel and ensure that this country continues funneling money over to Israel and turns a blind eye to an obvious and actual genocide going on in Gaza. You have 2 million people starving to death right now, 2 million people who've had their entire region decimated by bombs. And we're supposed to also believe that that's okay that that is appropriate retaliation, and that um, it's not genocide or ethnic cleansing at all, even though there's blatant discussions about moving these people out of the region because now it's uninhabitable. Oh, it's too bad. So now they just have to go. They just are going to have to clear the region. And you're supposed to turn a blind eye to that, turn a blind eye to this actual genocide. Our sovereignty seems to have been lost. And I think it's time we start questioning why anyone who's advocating for Israel is not being registered as a foreign agent in this country. That you don't get to hide behind a religion. You don't get to hide behind anti-Semitism, a label, trying to smear people and make them feel frightened of being labeled as such. You cannot hide behind this. This is, you are advocating as a foreign agent for a foreign country. And and not only that, but harming the sovereignty of the United States of America, passing laws in 37 states saying we're not allowed to criticize you, a foreign Middle Eastern country. Are you kidding me? How have we let this get this far? How did we let this get out of hand like this to where a foreign country, actors on behalf of a foreign country, have been able to infiltrate every, seems to be every layer of society from universities to government to social media to even now the religion of Christians to be able to infiltrate and and control to the level that there's these attempts to control and even many of them successful. How did we let it get this way? Hey guys, be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you like this segment. Now you might be wondering, this seems like it's part of a bigger show. You're right, it is. The full show is at kimiversonshow.com. So what you're watching is just a clip. And if you want to get the full experience, then you got to go to kimiversonshow.com. The show airs Monday through Friday, 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern at kimiversonshow.com. That is where you can watch the full show. Here, you just get clips. So click on the link down below. Go to the full show. Enjoy. Otherwise, I'll see you next time right here. And be sure, once again, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.